Welcome to Critic Lunch, the review show where we can't, we won't, and we don't stop talking about all the things we love to watch. Thanks for hanging out with me on my first day. Critic Lunch is going to be an interactive review show. How can you interact with Critic Lunch? It's easy. Every day, Monday through Thursday, there's going to be a video posted on TikTok, YouTube Shorts, right here on the YouTube channel, and Instagram. It'll have a topic for what you and your friends can talk about during lunch. They are the same exact topics that I use to make my review that you're about to hear. Okay, so I don't know about you, but I'm hungry. Let's dig into the lunch. Let's see what we got today. Ooh, we got a joke to start out today. Always fun, don't you think? Did you hear that they're doing a remake of Howl's Moving Castle? Which, by the way, is the movie I'm going to be talking about and reviewing this week. Did you hear they're doing a remake? of Howl's Moving Castle, except they're going to have every character be a cow. That's right, a cow. Do you know what they're going to call it? They're going to call it... I hate when they do this. You're going to have to wait a minute or two. We'll have your answer. Let's see what we've got next. Oh, we've got Monday's Critic Lunch topic. That day on Monday, I asked you to look at what did you notice in the things that you watched. What were the weird things you noticed, the interesting things you noticed, the funny things, and the important things that you noticed? So maybe you listened to the video and wrote down all your stuff then. Great. Share that next time, and I may share it on the show, by the way. For my weird, well, what's not weird in Howl's Moving Castle? It's all weird, which I think is the point. It, the weirdness makes it feel like you're watching a dream. The interesting thing, the most interesting I found out about this movie was the way that Sophie's, and this is a very minor spoiler, I won't go into details, don't worry, but Sophie's character changes ages and changes voice throughout the movie. And I was looking for a pattern, like when does she turn young? When does she turn old? And I didn't really find one because there's so much to this movie, like what you see on screen, what's happening in the story, that there's just too much amazing stuff to focus on that thing. So I think on my rewatch, I'm definitely going to look for a pattern of when does she change. I mean, I could look it up, I guess, but that's not as fun. Now, the fun part of this movie for me was just I never knew what was going to happen next. It's always a surprise, and that just kept me so into the movie, so engaged. And the important thing, I think, in this film, you know, there's, there's a lot about hearts in this film, which I think is really important. There's a lot about uh, magic in this film, which I think magic is really, really important about in this movie. Definitely going to do some thinking about the magic for my review. So again, those are my Wi-Fi's. Weird, interesting, funny, important. What were your Wi-Fi's? If you didn't do it last week, do it this week. Talk about it with your friends at lunch. All right, let's see what's next. All right. It's the answer to the joke. What are they going to call the remake of Howl's Moving Castle comprised entirely of cows? Howl's Mooing Castle, of course. Wasn't that worth the wait? It totally was. Oh, come on. All right. Let's see what we got next. Oh, day two of Critic Lunch was, the topic to talk about at lunch was, if a character in what you've watched recently was forced to sing a karaoke song, what song would they have to sing? Now, I chose Sophie, and I had a few ideas of what she might pick, what might be appropriate for her. The first was... When We Were Young by the Killers. I think that's pretty obvious once you watch the movie. I also thought very briefly about an oldie, like even older than me, Mr. Graybeard here, uh, a song called Time in a Bottle. It's a very, very popular, well, not a very popular, but it used to be a very popular karaoke song about just freezing time for a little bit. I thought that might be interesting. But I think Sophie, she would pick the classic by Gloria Gaynor, I Will Survive. Because I think that's ultimately what Sophie is. She is a survivor. And it's just a bop. I mean, how can you not get pumped up listening to that song? It's a great song. It's a classic for a reason. All right. Let's see what we got next. Hey, next we've got a trivia question. Here it is. After seeing which Studio Ghibli movie did Christian Bale, who, by the way, is the voice of Howl in the American version of Howl's Moving Castle, after seeing which Studio Ghibli movie did Christian Bale immediately agree to play any character in Howl's Moving Castle? I'll give you four choices. Was it My Neighbor Totoro, Spirited Away, Ponyo, or was it Kiki's Delivery Service? Answers coming up. Let's see what's next in the lunchbox. 
Hey, it's Wednesday's Critic Lunch Topic. Wednesday's Critic Lunch Topic was describe something in your movie or show that you're watching with an analogy. Now, if you've forgotten what an analogy is, here's a tip. Analogies are where you compare two things in order to show how they work similarly, okay, to prove a point about something. You know, what I came up with, Howl's Moving Castle has a magical door. Right next to the door, there's a circle that has four colors on it, and if you could spin the circle and go to a different color, the door opens up outside to a brand new place. You're in a brand new place. And I thought that that works a lot like people's personality. Like when you go to a different color in the movie, Hal walks out, he's a different person. He may be um, the wizard Pendragon or Jenkins, or he may be bird dude flying around, stopping the war. Um, and I thought, you know, when I show up to different places, I'm kind of a different person, right? Like I'm not talking the same. I'm not talking about the same things, maybe not doing the same things when I'm hanging out with my parents as when I'm hanging out with my family or with my friends. You know, like me watching a football game with my friends, very different than when I was a teacher in the classroom. I didn't speak the same. I mean, I'm still me, just like Howl's Moving Castle is still the castle, but the way I present myself is different. I kind of become slightly a different person. So. Yeah, in a weird way, I think Howl's Moving Castle works a lot like our personalities do. We're a little bit different when we change the color on our little doorway. An analogy. It's easy, right? All right, next. Hey, it's day four, Thursday of Critic Lunch. And for this day, it was the classic critic questions. That was the critic lunch topic. The three classic critic questions. That's hard to say, right? The three classic critic questions are. What was it trying to do? Was it trying to be funny? Was it trying to say something about the world? What was it trying to do? The second question is, did it do it? Like, did they succeed in trying to do the thing they were trying to do? And the last question is, is it worth it? Is it worth your time? So here we go. <clears throat> what Miyazaki was trying to do with making Howl's Moving Castle, I think is just create this incredible dreamlike world. I mean, this is a world, yes, there's danger, there's thrilling action in this world, but for some strange reason, it all feels safe to me. I think he's really, yeah, trying to create this alternate reality where where things are still exciting, but, but you just feel not in danger all the time, which I think is the way kids should feel. And these movies really were made for kids, even though adults like me love them too. I think he was also trying uh, to send a message about personal growth, about an anti-war message as well. And I don't know which one he was trying to do more. If I had to guess, I think he just wanted to create this incredible world. And then the message got in there too, and on purpose, right? But like, I think the main reason for him making this film was just to create this incredible world. So did he do that? Yes, absolutely. This world is incredible. I would love to visit. Like I said, it seems scary for me, but everyone in the movie can handle it. Um, the message also gets across. It's a fantastic anti-war film. It's also a great lesson about how to age and how to change your mindset. And is it worth it? Absolutely. I could not recommend this movie more. You know, it's not going to be, um, if you've grown up in the United States or even Europe, you're accustomed to what a story feels like. You know a story when you hear it. This doesn't always feel like a story. And that may be cultural, but trust me, stick with it. It is amazing. Okay, back to the lunchbox. We've got your trivia answer, folks. What film made Christian Bale say, yes, I will take any role you offer me in Howl's Moving Castle? It was Spirited Away. Way to guess it if you got it right. By the way, I'm reviewing Howl's Moving Castle because it just played in theaters last weekend. It's what I want to see. Studio Ghibli is releasing or has been releasing their films in theaters for a limited time all year long and the final one is coming up it's spirited away the one that made christian bale agree immediately to take any role in the film that's going to be in theaters guys october 28th till november 1st it's just showing for one long weekend so make sure you go see it it's incredible it's another great studio ghibli movie it's another just incredible movie all right and now we are to my review here we go so I'm just going to read my review. If you've never read my stuff before, I used to be an English teacher, so I give every movie a report card. They get three grades, story, people, and film geek stuff. They also get an elective class grade, which 
is special for each movie. Okay, so story. We all dream, right? It's the language that the entire world shares, even though it's got some really bizarre grammar to it, right? Like a person might change age every time you see them. Um, you may have world changing events, like super crazy stuff happening. And then all of a sudden everyone just forgets about it and it's okay. You never even think about it. Um, or maybe, just maybe, you have this RV born out of a junkyard come to life. You know, nobody bats an eye at these things, right? Things like this feel normal and almost even expected in dreams. You know, we can't really speak in dream. It's a language that we can only listen to while we're sleeping. But every once in a while, someone comes across that can speak dream, okay? Miyazaki can tell you a story in dream. You know, it's no surprise that, like sleeping, you got to go to a dark, quiet room to hear it. For story, Howl's Moving Castle gets an A. For people, you will fall in love with this ragtag collection of characters. You know, Sophie, uh, she's fiercely independent. She's not always happy with being independent, I don't think, but she's super duper independent. She may be afraid at first. She may be petrified, but she's a survivor. Time out. I got that from my karaoke question. That's how it made it into my review. Cool, huh? Time in. Um, once she learns to care less about what other people think, her life just starts to soar to unbelievable heights. Howl, the character, is beguiling yet immature. Markle is plucky but very, very silly. Calcifer is somehow just an absolute grump and a deer at the same time. I don't know how he did it. But my favorite character, Turniphead. Totally. People gets an A. Phil nerd stuff. The love that Miyazaki and his crew have for this film spills out of the film into the theater or your living room and into your soul, I swear. Like you ever notice that if food is cooked with love, it just tastes better? That's what happens in this movie. You can tell how the animation was made with love. You know, the colors grab your attention. The way things move can just enchant you. Like, I was moved even by the way the clouds just float across the sky. Film nerd stuff, the animation style, A+. Elective class is going to be, do you believe in magic? I hope you do. You know, I'm going to keep going with this food thing. I have a favorite food. It's a chicken finger sub on white, medium with the works from John's Pizza and Sub Shops. It's incredible. I often dream of living a life where I could just eat one every day. But if I think I did eat one every day, I, I think I'd still like it, but it wouldn't feel special. Like it wouldn't impress me anymore. And I say all that because magic is everywhere in Howl's Moving Castle. You know, these characters encounter magic on the daily, but they're still just mystified. They're amazed by it at all times. You know, like I would get a little sick of the sandwich. They don't get sick of the magic. It's still just as surprising and beautiful every time they encounter it. And I think that's the key to living a life full of magic. It's to constantly remind yourself to always be amazed by the things you see every day. And I think that's, that's a great summation of what makes Miyazaki's film so incredible. Elective class, get an A+. All right, let's see what we got next here. We gotta be getting near the end. I mean, I just shared my review, right? Oh, awesome. We have a review from a viewer. Yes, it's our first show. How did we do that? It must be magic, right? I told you this was an interactive show. So I have a review of a film from Nickel in Kentucky. Nickel watched a film called Om Shanti Om. It's on Netflix. It's, I believe, a Bollywood film, he wrote it and told me here. Um, here's what Nickel thinks of Om Shanti Om. I do think that there are some parts of the film that aren't all well written and the pacing near the end seems to hasten, which makes you want more. However, with the sort of bittersweet ending, that feeling of wanting more may have been intentional. Some of the humor seems off and there's some statements that are too strong and potentially problematic for present times. The songs are absolutely amazing, especially Dastan e Om Shanti Om, literally a six to seven minute song. That's six or seven, not 67, by the way. Uh, I was talking too fast. A six or seven minute song explaining the whole film in a musical, sad but dramatic in a ballad sort of way. First of all, Nicole, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts on Om Shanti Om. You know, you make me want to see it. I like how you talk about how um, the pacing near the end gets quicker. I think you're right. I think that is intentional and that's the editor's job to cut all the film up into different cuts and make it feel faster. 
And I have to be honest, when you say things are problematic, kind of makes me want to see the movie a little bit more. I don't know. I will definitely be checking Om Shanti Om out. It is available on Netflix at the time of this program. Again, thanks, Nickel. And everyone, you can get your review on the show. Share your review by hitting me up at MrFDigsMovies at gmail.com. I'd love to hear what you're watching, folks. All right, let's go back to the lunchbox. What else have I been watching? Not a lot this week, but I did watch the latest episode of Ahsoka. Um, I think it's really good. I mean, I'm not even a Star Wars Rebels guy, but I'm still enjoying it. You know, the characters are really intriguing. The story is pretty cool. Um, and, you know, they give you all the Star Wars stuff. You know, you got your lightsabers. You got, like, dodging asteroids. You got every blasters. You got old characters coming back every once in a while. That could be a good thing. Like, for me, it feels warm and cozy going back to all that Star Wars stuff. But I can also see the counterpoint where some people may get a little tired of that. Anyway, I think Ahsoka's pretty good. What am I watching next week? I am going to be watching and reviewing the horror film on Hulu. It's called No One Will Save You. It stars one of my favorite actors, Caitlin Deaver. Um, yeah, that's what I'm going to watch. So I'm going to be talking about that next week. I'm going to be talking with my friends all week during Critic Lunch, just like you should too. Last thing in the lunchbox today. It's the outro. Here we go. Talk about what you're watching with your friends. Use the Critic Lunch topics. They're there if you want to talk about them or talk about what you're watching however you want to. You can find the Critic Lunch videos on TikTok, Instagram, and right here on my YouTube channel. They are posted Monday through Thursday. And if you comment, I'll be sharing some of my faves on the show next week. And if, if like Nickel, you come up with an entire review, email it to me, mrfdigsmovies at gmail.com. All right, folks, thanks so much for hanging out with me in my first show. I had a blast. Have fun watching whatever you're watching this week. And as always, remember to make every lunch a critic lunch. Peace out. We'll see you next week.